Oh, g'day, welcome to Farming Live Australia. It's very dry in most places in Australia at the moment and meat producers are wondering what the short term future holds. Bushfires are raging in southwestern Queensland and there is no immediate relief in sight. I'll read you a statement issued by the Bureau of Meteorology recently. The Bureau of Meteorology issued a drought statement on the 6th of October 2023 for Australia as a whole September rainfall was 70.8% below the 1961-1990 average, the driest September on record since 1900. To make things worse, meat prices to the producer has dropped through the floor and feed is disappearing at a rapid rate because there's been no rain. The price in the shops doesn't seem to in any way reflect the price that the producers are getting. I noticed that when prices to producers go up, the prices at retail go up about as quick as shit flies off a well-oiled shovel. But when prices drop to the producer, they don't seem to come down for a long, long time, if at all. In this video, I'm going to show you around our property and a couple of strategies that I'm using to try to keep the cattle alive until it rains. One of the strategies that I'm using is I've kept a couple of paddocks back and haven't fed them to the cattle for a long time. Whenever I don't need to feed them to them, I keep them locked up. And as you can see, there's a bit of green feed left in there and quite a bulk of feed. So that will help them a bit for a little while. I didn't have to invite them in twice, however, they're not starving by any means. The old females of breeders are still in reasonable condition and we don't like them too fat anyway. If they get too fat, they don't breed too well. They're still in good condition and the longer we can keep them that way, the better chance we have of getting them through without any hiccups. One thing that we have to look out for is old cows with great big calves on them that are sucking the guts out of the old cow. The cows and the calves will do a lot better if we wean the calves and bring them home and feed them. It's another day and I'm loading up some mineral to take over to the cattle. I've got sulphur in this bucket here. And part of our strategy for looking after the cattle is to make sure that we keep the mineral that they need up to them. I'm just going through the gate to our other place where we keep our breeder cattle and calves. And as you can see, it's very, very dry. Not a green thing in sight in this paddock, which is way less than desirable, but there's not much we can do about it. I get all the old dirt and sticks out of the feeders. And spread them out so all the cattle have a chance of getting some mineral. Put a little bit of sulphur in each one of the containers as well. The sulphur helps with ticks and pests in them. Yeah. 
You can tell that they're not badly lacking because they're not really going crazy for it. They are eating it, but they're not starving for it. We find you're better off to give them a little bit regularly as opposed to a big heap and then none for a while. This creek is the main creek on this property and it hasn't stopped flowing for about three years. In years gone by it stopped flowing for as long as three or four months at a time but not lately. But you can see here where it goes across the roadway it's starting to slow right down and I'd say it'll be stopped running completely in another couple of weeks. This is just down from that creek and you can see that it stopped running completely down here and the creek runs down and supplies this dam with water where the cattle drink. So no more creek waters running into that dam. You can see a fence running through the dam and when the dam's full it's up, up, up above that fence. So it's probably down about two foot six or 750 millimetres lower than at its peak. This is our creek on our home place and it hasn't been this low for probably about three years. It normally runs around the end of this log and across the start of the roadway here and then around and down into this hole and as you can see it's completely stopped running. That's not all bad because I do want to put a pipe spillway in here and at least now that it's stopped running I can achieve that if I get enough time. On our biggest paddock on our home farm we have this small dam and it's spring fed and I've never seen it dry up and in fact it's only dropped probably a few inches since it's become very dry and we always seem to have some water in that. So I don't think we're going to run out of water for the cattle over here. We do have a bore on this place as well and on the other place I got a bore installed with really good water and we've never had to use it yet. So our cattle won't run out of water but feed's going to be the thing. I'll just show you what the feed's like in this paddock and there is still quite a bit. It's very hayed off but they'll still eat it and they'll still survive on it. I don't say you'd put cattle in here to fatten them but it's certainly good enough to keep them alive for another couple of months. It's not all negative, the dry weather. This area down in here where all this scrub is, I haven't been able to get down into here for the last three years because it's been so wet. There's an extremely wet area you've got to go through to get to it, and that's dried up now so I can get in here. And I have started to clean up a bit down here, and I'll clean it all up and get rid of a lot of this lantana and stuff while it's dry. So, yes, the dry weather does make things difficult, but it also allows us to do things that we need to do that we haven't been able to do. Another thing that we have to keep a constant eye on is the boundary fences. Inside the paddock, it's really brown, and outside the paddock, there's still a bit of green pick, and the cows stick their head through the fence to get to the green pick. And sometimes if the wire's a bit weak or a post weak, they'll actually break the fence. And if it gets bad enough, they'll get out. I'm not sure what happened in this area. Something, they've got a broken off post just here, which I'll replace tomorrow. And here, only a few metres away, the top wire's broken. Well, thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. If anybody out there has got any power to change the weather, please send us some rain. See you later. We'll see you next time. Bye.